Okay. Oops. Okay. So now we're on to the entertainment portion of the evening. It's my extreme pri privilege to introduce Dr. Vedabratha Payne. Dr. Payne was an award-winning scientist with NASA for 15 years. Concurrent with his NASA work, he taught in UCLA, published over 150 technical papers, chaired several image sensor conferences, and was an invited speaker to many conferences and companies. And he's won several awards, including the Liu Allen Award, the JPL Tap Honor Award, the Walter Kosanofsky Special Mention, and the NASA Achievement Award for Inventors. He, however, left NASA in 2009 to follow his passion, filmmaking. And his debut film, Chittagong, in 2012, won three national awards, including the Golden Lotus as the best first film, and the Indra Gandhi Award as the best debut director. He's actually one of the inventors of the CMOS digital imaging technology that's enabled the digital camera revolution from cell phone cameras to movie cameras, such as those used by RED and ARRI, to those in space telescopes. He holds over 87 patents, and he was inducted to the US Space Technology Hall of Fame Beda Bratha was also the executive producer of the National Best Film Award-winning Amu 2005 that premiered in Berlin and Toronto Film Festival. He's been a principal researcher for many other movies and the writer of many books. Beda Bratha graduated from the Indian Institute of Technology, Karakpur, Karakpur, <laughs> India in 1986 where, of course, seeing from the past achievements, this wouldn't come as a surprise, he topped the Department of Electronics and Electrical Communication. He received his master's and PhD degrees from Columbia University, New York in 1992. Please give it up for Dr. Beda Brata Oh boy. Looks like everybody's set up for the evening's program. Good evening, everybody. I'm really honored and really delighted to be here in Houston. Here's a funny thing. I was with NASA for 15 years or 16 years. I can't remember, actually. I was in JPL, and I worked with a lot of NASA centers. And I used to work on remote sensing and image sensors and so on. And would you believe it? This is the first time I'm coming to Houston. I have never come to Houston as when I was in NASA. So I'm doubly glad now that that one has also been uh, fulfilled thanks to you. Um, so um, I, don't, I can't see everybody, all the lights are on me, but I somehow kind of feel a little bit like, uh, oh, I can hear. I can hear. But here's the thing. I kind of feel like Astrani's character from Shole. Half of you must be already asleep or in food coma. The other half must be headed for the bar. And here I am with the rest. Talking about Indian cinema. Where is it? Yeah, there, Indian cinema. The good thing about that is that, you know, we have, a, what, a billion people? And we have 10 billion ideas about what Indian cinema should be about. So here is one more. All right, so let's, let's talk about this. Uh, my name is Vedabrata Pine. Everybody calls me Dr. Payne. Glad that I'm not a dentist. So the subtitle of my, my talk is A Painful Tale. And believe me, it is. For all independent filmmakers who are coming up, it is a painful tale. All right. Why isn't it moving? Ah, there you go. So here is what I'm going to talk about uh, uh, today. Talk about uh, digital movie making, which is, you know, which is the what industry has moved towards. I'm going to talk about the digital camera invention, the technology invention that, that we came up with in nine, back in 1993. And then I'm going to talk about what's new and what's not in, in Indian cinema. So first, here is me in 2006, a nerd holding an eight inch wafer with a whole bunch of image sensors on it. Happily in JPL, oh, doing well, 
senior research scientist, NASA, uh, uh, US Space Technology Hall of Fame. And then I said, what the hell am I doing with my life? And that's when I said, well, I got to quit. And I did quit cold turkey. And here is what I became, the lost soul, sitting on a camera. And as you can see, it's red. It's a digital camera. It's, it's using the technology that I had helped develop. And you know, this is an interesting thing. In 2010, this is one of the first movies, Chittagong, the movie that I made, was the first movie to be made, one, one of the first movies, not the first movie, one of the first movies to be made in India in digitally. And everybody told me, don't go for it. There's going to be lots of problems. I said, I don't have a choice. I have invented this technology, and after that, if I go and shoot on film, well, I, can't, I won't be able to live with myself. So that's, that's where we got red, and we shot, or shot on it, and I'll show you some clips from that. Now, uh, you know, leaving my um, day job in JPL it, you know, from a position of certainty to complete position of uncertainty was, was a was a huge big deal, and I, you know, as they say, between bravery and foolishness, there's only a fine line. And I'm still trying to discover which one it is. But I was lucky. Chittagong did win a whole number of awards. It was very, very well received. It won the national award. As, along with that, it won uh, the best film award in Sedona International Film Festival, as well as in um, Florence. Um, so uh, I, I want to show you all the, all the uh, excitement that, that was generated as a result of this, this small film. Because for a change, a film made on a pretty shoestring budget compared to what Bollywood is used to, all of a sudden caught attention of a large number of Bollywood personalities. And uh, here is, I think, some pictures from, from, my, uh, from, from the Bollywood. Uh, can you hear me? OK. Um, from Bollywood, uh, uh, from Bombay premiere of, of Chittagong. That's Mr. Shah Rukh Khan. That's actually on the uh, right is Vega Tamotia. She's one of the actors in my movie. And here is even more interesting. And that's what actually we're going to talk about. Shah Rukh Khan and Anurag Kashyap, one from Bollywood and one from the independent Bollywood, sharing the stage. And I think that was, that was one of the first things that happened uh, for the first time. And then came Mr. Bachchan, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan, whose films I have, we have all grown up with. Um, I remember watching Zanjeer and being really affected by it. For him to come for my, uh, this, for my premiere was, was a really, really, really uh, great, great deal. It meant a really a great deal for me. And of course, there's Jaya Bachchan. And to the uh, ri right of them, or to the left of me, if you can see it, that's Rasul Pukuti. He is the first Indian technician to win an Oscar for Slumdog Millionaire sound. He did my sound as well. Um, here is Amitabh Bachchan and Dr. Pranoy Roy from NDTV. And here is what we are here today, talking about the new waves of Indian cinema. Some of my favorite directors, and there are many, many more. There's Anurag Kashyap. After that, there is Divakar Banerjee. And to the right of me, Vishal Bharadwaj, and then Sudhir Mishra. So it, Chittagong all of a sudden came to embody what the new wave of Indian cinema has been all about. And uh, as we go along, we will talk more about it. But before that, I think I'm going to show you a couple of um, uh, short clips from my movie. Um, you know, the, the, the movie was shot, uh, as I said, digitally. But a few th other things that we did, that's something that I wanted to bring to your attention. The movie was shot with a very diffused light, very different from how Bollywood shoots movies. Bollywood, everything is very contrasty, everything is saturated. Here you would see there is a very lovely uh, diffused look to it, a very glowing look to it. I had Eric Zimmerman as my uh, DP, uh, cinematographer, and he did a fantastic job. Uh, so I'll, I'll play that. And then the other thing that, that I'm going to talk about is that the digital camera really helped me shoot. And you've got to realize, I had no training in filmmaking. When I went to shoot my movie, I'd never been on a film set before that. When I went to shoot my movie, I had not been to any film school or assisted anybody. So for me to be able to, to shoot this digital uh, camera was a very, very big help. And I'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. But you know, we had battle scenes with hundreds of uh, kids who had never seen a camera before. 
could direct them. The fact that I, I had the flexibility of using digital was really, really helpful. So enjoy the next two clips. Uh, let me stop talking and here they are. Can we have the video, please? Piki piki si hai zindagi, chini chini khab ghol do. Dekho na bit jaye ye lamhe ye ghadiya. Piti kaisi ho? Achhi ho. Main tumse kuch baat karna chaa raha tha. Bolye na. Piti, main tumhe batana chaa raha tha. मतलब मैं तुमसे कहना चाह रहा था कि बोलिए ना दिस इज़ द फर्स्ट क्लिप एंड नाउ द सेकंड वन स्टार्ट द मशीन गन फायर आउट फ्लैंक देम द थर्ड So those are the two clips, very short clips of a, it's actually a one hour 40 minute movie, it's not a very long movie, so it's, it's available on DVD, you guys can see it. And I'm sure we are uh, coming to, to the US with the release very, very soon. Um, so I hope to see you guys at, at, at the theaters uh, sometime. But uh, let me switch gears and talk about what was behind this camera that shot this movie. And that is 1993, what is called CMOS Active Pixel Sensor, which we invented and developed. And this is the first 28 by 28 pixel image that we got in our lab. In those days, there was Polaroid camera with which we took the picture. And that's how it all began. Very soon after that, we had what we call digital camera on a chip, which is an image sensor, uh, analog to digital converters, bunch of other uh, processing circuits, and a uh, kind of a mini computer to, to, to sequence the whole thing. And that became a single chip camera. And, and very soon after that, we developed the first single chip digital camera. Now, this may not look very small to you, although it was size of a quarter at that time, the smallest uh, lens that we could find, we put it on. But that's what ushered in the revolution of, of digital cameras. And it's come to a point where when you talk to the kids, they no longer say digital cameras, they just say cameras. Because a film camera doesn't exist for them. You know, somebody said that a new technology doesn't get uh, accepted because the old generation accepts it. But the new generation grows up not knowing that the previous thing existed. And that's what happened with, with image sensor. We saw right in front of our eyes how when everybody was laughing at us for doing CMOS active pixel sensors when CCDs were around, from that, the whole industry, now a $10 billion industry, entirely based on this technology. So sometimes when I see pictures being taken, I feel a little bit satisfaction. Uh, I'll tell you one, another fun, funny story along with that. In 93, my then wife, who was in UCLA at that point, uh, I used to go and meet all of them in the UCLA film school, and I told them that one day, everything would become digital. And they practically lynched me, because they could not believe in 93 that film will not, at some, some point of time, will become redundant. And what has made this happen are a few cameras, and I'm, now I'm talking about in the film area, not so much, mo or movie area, not so much in the, in the cell phone or DSLR, are this Canon EOS 5D or the Black Magic, which are about 2,000 pixels uh, horizontally, that kind of resolution, very low cost, about 2,000 to $5,000. And what that has brought in, may not be the best quality, but it has brought in a democratization where before that only a handful of people could use the technology. Now, a large number of kids, large number of young filmmakers, even filmmakers like me can start using it. Yeah, they may not be producing the Oscar winning films, but they get this confidence and the skill to make movies. 
And then you have the big daddies of, of film cameras. You have Red Dragon, which is the, it's a new camera that's just, just about coming out. You have Ari Alexa, Ari, which used to make the film camera, now is in the, in the digital camera business. And you have Sony, you know, usual sus suspects. But if you look at a digital camera, like a, 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 a red camera, it's about a year big. It's pretty small to use. And as I said, you know, in uh, a few years back, a lot of GPs would say, ah, it's not so good. Digital camera doesn't produce good results. It's not really, not really cinema. So here, I want to show you a clip, and you tell me how it looks. Can we roll the video, please? This is shot with uh, Dragon, um, Red Dragon, which is the latest camera that's coming out from Dra Dragon, and I've been working with this camera for, um, you can play the, play the uh, video um, for last couple of months. And here are some of the shots, and you can, this is the camera, this is the size of the camera. That's what you shoot films with today. And you can look at it to see what kind of latitude it, it has, that you can underexpose and then still get beautiful shots out of it. Look at the range of latitudes that you get in digital cameras today. And this is not just with red, with, with all other cameras as well. Uh, looking straight into the sun and shooting and still getting good skin tones. This, by the way, is shot at 100 frames per se second, which is four times faster than what films are shot with. And you can, as a result, you can see beautiful motion effects that otherwise you will not be able to see. You can see the, the dust kicking out. And this is what, like just recently, Peter Jackson shot Hobbit at 96 frames per second using red. This is a great shot because when we looked at this, we could not see the highlights because the sun was so bright. And yet here you can see with the, with the camera, all the details. A camera is now better than what your, your human eyes can see. Now that's enough about uh, talk about cameras. Uh, so uh, let's let's move into a uh, couple of small things. Um, it's uh, you know so I'm in a, I'm a at the end of the day I'm a, still a techie, and I'm in an IIT gathering. So so I had to use at least one graph. I'm allowed that one graph. And this graph actually shows you what's the difference between film and digital. And you know, a lot of people did not have that, this understanding. And very, very simply, this is what it is. Uh, this is shows the blue curve shows what, the, what a digital thing looks like, and the red curve shows what a film looks like. And you can see at the low light level, digital is better than film. At high light level, what I, I'm circling now, film is better than digital. So once a DP or a cinematographer or a photographer, when you are you're shooting, you can hold your highlight properly. You can get beautiful, beautiful shots. And I'm going to show you a couple of scenes from my movie to, to show you that. What it, what it shows is that when you have a lot of range, a lot of latitude, like here is a situation where uh, there's bright lights over here, and it's pretty dark in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, on the floor. How do you shoot? The way you shoot is to make sure that your highlights are always covered, and you add a little bit of extra light for for uh, for the floors, and when, once you do that, you get beautiful, beautiful effects. And I'm going to show you that. So this is a, a scene from my movie again. Um, let's roll the uh, roll the bit. Rest, let's roll the video, please. Uh oh, it's going the wrong way. There it is. Uh, very soon you would see that we'd go inside this, this hut, and the outside is very bright, and the inside is pretty dark, it's pretty, and we managed to Just cover this entire range. मुझे क्या नहीं मालूम आप लोग कौन हैं चीता गंग पर हमले की खबर थैंक यू हर अखबार में देखी थी अगर मैं अपने लोगों से पैसे लूंगा तो मुझे जन्नू में भी जगह नहीं मिलेगी खुदा से आप लोगों के लिए रोज दुआ पढ़ता हूं आज थोड़ी ज्यादा पढूंगा क्योंकि आज आप लोग मेरे सामने हैं
so here it's showing showing the emotional scene, but but showing the range of, of latitudes that you can get. Thank you. So uh, let me actually go past this. I think we've talked about a lot of it, but um, and we're kind of running out of time. So maybe we'll we'll talk about that that separately. But one small thing I wanted to show you. One of the great things you can do with digital today is the punching, as we call it. Now you're shooting on red, for instance, with 5,000 pixels wide, and you're going to finish it on 2,000 pixels. So naturally, you can zoom in after the fact, 100%, 150%. Now why, that's why is that important? Like I was in a situation where I was running out of uh, daylight, and I had to take shots. So the, here was a situation, should I shoot something on medium shot and, and not take the close up shots, or should I take the close up shots? Well, I chose to take the medium shot and then in the post, corrected it, just did a punch in. And I'm gonna show you, show you that example. Uh, can you play the video please? And here is an uncorrected scene where you see this boy in pretty much in focus, um, not still not as close as I wanted. Um, it's not color corrected here because this is not what we used and you'll see how it's going to be used with the real footage. This is the real footage, this is the real shot. And I wanted a close up of that boy, which I did not have. And hey presto, here is a close up, which was made from the medium shot. This is the beauty of shooting digital. You can do a lot of stuff in post, which you cannot do with the film. All right, moving on. Now I'm kind of going to move into the, into the Indian cinema industry. Now most of you are familiar with Bollywood and you are also familiar with the, some of the numbers that we make 1200 movies a year. You guys knew that, right? Only about 200 of that comes out of Bollywood. The rest is from the regional cinema, okay? What is the size? Well, we are about 100 billion, 15 billion dollars. Not bad, not bad at all, but till you see this. We are only about 7% of the global box office revenue. And mind you, in, in the West, in the US, in Europe, there are many, many other ancillary markets which I'm not even including and which don't even exist in India. So we have a long, long way to go. And this is sort of a message to all the executives, entrepreneurs, and so on, that there is something to be done here. Uh, and I, we'll talk a little bit more about it. Um, sorry, uh, yes. Um, now within that, what has happened is that, what was Bollywood? Bollywood, really speaking, was, or, and still is, is a, just a collection of a whole bunch of emotions. You have romance, you have love at first sight, you have melodrama, you have an item number, you have a song, you have a devotional thing. You have a comedy situation, you have a charismatic villain, Mogambo Kuchwe. But, and the most important thing about this is that none of these has to have any connection with each other. It's just a show. Seriously, that's how Bollywood films are made. By the turn of this century, that is 21st century, that thing started to change. The first movie I think that broke that genre is Dil Chahata Hai, which many of you I'm sure had seen. It, talked, it still talked about a love story or three love stories, but had a very, very different outlook. And that outlook actually fit well with the globalization that has been happening a whole generation of youth and a whole middle class has grown up with different sensibilities than your Nirupa Roy. And, and that's what the new wave of Indian cinema is beginning to capture. So I'm gonna show you a number of movies that ca came on in 2000 till 2009 that kind of slowly started setting the trend. Lagan came in 2001. Monsoon Wedding, a very different movie and, and did very, very well. Uh, Magboon by uh, Vishal Bharadwaj. Um, Black Friday, Anurag Kashyap, Amu by Shonali, um, Iqbal, um, uh, Nagesh Kukunur, Omkara, again Vishal. So you, Khosla Ka Ghosla, what a fantastic movie by Dibakar Banerjee, Tare Zameen Par. I mean, you see these, these movies that came in, uh, one after another, that kind of already was setting itself apart from Bollywood. And that's what I think the most exciting thing about Indian cinema today that you do not have to be a star or uh, uh, the insider of the industry to make films that stick. And that's what, uh, you know, 2010 onwards, I'm gonna show you a number of films. You see the variety that, that, that India has, has begun to come up with. 
It started with Love, Sex, and Dhoka in 2010. Dibakar Banerjee again. What a beautiful film. Tere Bin Laden. I, I don't think many people have seen it, but again, a, a lovely film. Uran. It created ripples. That's where India began to be known internationally. Internationally, it went to Cannes and, and made quite a splash. Fifthly Lie. Who would have known that a movie about uh, farmer suicide could win like hundred, uh, hundreds of crores of uh, rupees in the, in the box office? Um, Ishkia. Um, Rajaniti, you have very, very different kinds of films. No One Killed Jessica, this is already in 2011 now. Stanley Ka Dabba, um, Ragini MMS. Uh, why isn't it moving? Delhi Belly. You know, this is a movie that was in making for 11 years. Akshat Verma, who I know very well, wrote the, the Delhi Belly. From two, 1997, he has been writing this script, and nobody would take it. And then it took, by completely by chance, Amir Khan came, to, came upon it. And Delhi Belly became one of the biggest grocers in the independent uh, market. Uh, and one of the great, greatest things about these is the Dhobi Ghat. What a fantastic movie if you have seen it. Uh, Zindagi Na Milegi Dobara. Then we come to 2012, Dirty Picture. Uh, Paan Singh Tomar, completely off, offbeat movie. Makes such a splash. Um, Shanghai, Kahani, Wiki Donor. Hats off to uh, John, John Abraham for, for producing a film like that. Gangs of Wasipuri, you all know about it. And that, that's what established us in, in, in Cannes. Now there is not a single international film festival that happens without considering Indian cinema. That we didn't used to be the case. Chittagong, it, uh, I talked about it. Um, and this trend continues into 2013. You have Special Chabbis, Kai Poche, Bombay Talkies. What a movie. It does not even have a recognizable star, nor does it have a love story at all. It's the first movie made without a boy-girl romance. Unbelievable. Lutera, who would have thunk that an old love story would, would make such, that kind of a splash? Bhag Milka Bhag. You know, I was with Rakesh when he first narrated the story to me. And I said, film to nature, this film is not going to work. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's how the Indian film industry is moving. Um, what's common in all of these is that First of all, they're not like the old parallel cinema. They are movies. They are movies that are accessible. And that's very, very important because you don't want to have just a niche audience going to it. You want to have business. You want to have regular people go for these movies. There's a script. Now, this is a very important thing because till the other day, Indian executives, which I will not mention, they used to go on stage and we in, in India make movies without scripts. It's just very well known. Uh, again, I will not name directors who would go up on stage, who would say that, All right, let's shoot something, we will fix it in dubbing. Well, th those are things that are changing. Why is script so important? You know, in my movie, uh, I shot in sync sound. That is, I picked up the sound on, on location, which is beginning to happen in, in, in Indian movies more and more. Happens in Hollywood all the time. Why did I shoot sync? Not because of the sound, but because of performance. Because what you get in real time on, in that moment, you can never recreate back later. You know, acting is not about doing this. Acting is not about showing you're happy. Well, how do you show happy? Like this, you can't. Acting is responding to the situation, just like we are ordinary people will do. Uh, act, acting is, is knowing what the where the character has come from. In my movie, the way I talked to my actors was purely by creating backstories and leaving it to them to, to interact how they're going to interact. Um, so these are things that are happening in, in um, Indian movies today that is, oh, why isn't this not moving? Can I? Uh, uh, it's, it's not, ah, there you go. Um, and the other thing that has changed along with that is all the movies that I've shown you, they were not star driven. They were all character driven. And that's what is the big, big change that is happening. And what this is given, and at the same time doing good business. 10 to 15 crores of business and some of them doing 100 crores. And new studios are coming up to back them. Like uh, um, you have Viacom, you have UTV. What this has given us, filmmakers, is a new confidence. And this confidence is so very important. Because I'll give you an example from my uh, movie. When I went to shoot my movie, Practically everybody on set was more experienced, 
more skilled and perhaps more talented than me. And they were all telling me all kinds of things to do. Until I realized one day that they may be telling me all the right things, but they don't have the vision. The film is a, is a director's vision. And the day I realized that, I became a filmmaker. It's very much like what a mother who has just given birth to a child goes through. Everybody tells the mother, do this, don't do this. Then the mother says, okay, shut up, let me sleep and take care of my baby. And that's what believing in yourself is what movie making is all about. And that brings me to the, to the last point before I let you go. I'm sure you guys are all ready to uh, rock and roll. Uh, is that what has happened today is that there are studios that are coming up that are picking up films, as I mentioned a few, but not enough. There are, our international presence is there in terms of film festivals, but not in terms of business. Uh, you, Gunit Monga or, or Anurag Kashyap, who have done such a fantastic job of taking Indian movies abroad, that is Indi in, in Indian independent movies, still have such a hard time getting these movies sold. And along with that, we have the branding and the PR companies in India, and I hope people are listening, who are going about it exactly the old way because all the PR companies in India know how to place a big star. They do not know how to place a product. At the end of the day, filmmaking is something that belongs to your heart. It has to come from your heart. We need, we need financiers who are in it purely because they love it and they can turn this into a big business. We need PR people who can craft new ways of reaching out to, to the people. I'm not talking about reaching out to your, what we call, uh, uh, 75 cent crowd. We are talking about reaching out to the 300 million people who is the middle class of India, who are ex exposed to a very different sensibility. We have a situation in India today, those who are familiar with Bombay will realize, in Juhu, on one side you have Chandan, which is like a very um, cheap uh, cinema, uh, non-expensive cinema, where you have a Dabangtu running houseful, and right next to it you have a PVR, where there is girl in white yellow boots running houseful. Now this is what I'm calling, talking about Indian, new Indian cinema. Are we able to capture that? And to capture that, we need fearless filmmakers, which we have a crop of. We need financiers. Well, there are some. We need distributors who can believe in us. We don't have any. And we need new ways of doing PR and marketing. At the end of the day, no matter how good the product is, if we do not have new ways of marketing, because believe it, believe, believe me, we are not going to be spending 10 crores on marketing our films. But in three, four crores, can you give a winner? This is a challenge, it's an artistic challenge, and there is a, a, a challenge for all entrepreneurs and a challenge for all branding. And if we can do that, let me tell you, Indian movies are going to be seen here and would be, would be in the top 10 grocers because the world is waiting for Indian cinema. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bhairi thank you so much. Small token of our appreciation. Give Bhairi Pain a hand, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat>